So uh, I'm going to give you 37. Yeah, times? 42. 1554. 42 is the same as 3 times 7 times 2. So what I did, I multiplied 37 by 3 and I got 111. Then I times that by 14 and I got 1554. And is this yeah. using the this Ethiopian method? Absolutely. And there are many other things that um, the Africans invented for mathematics. I was told that it came from the Greeks, but what we weren't taught is that the Greeks were students of black Africans in Egypt and Ethiopia. And I think the Ethiopian method makes math so much easier. If I knew what I knew about mathematics when I was 16, I would have loved mathematics a lot more. When I was in school, I was told about the, the kings of England, Henry VIII, William the Conqueror. And when it was talking about black people, they just spoke about slavery. Now, as um, the only black person in my class, that made me feel really bad. How's the person who was taught that he's a slave and has contributed nothing, how's he supposed to have any pride? The history of black people didn't begin in slavery. It's like reading a novel and starting 80% of the way in. That's, that's an injustice. That's not, you're not getting the whole story. The human story is not the monopoly of one particular group of people. And even though the ancient Greeks, this has been one of the controversial eras, uh, areas, a scholar called Martin Bernal from Cambridge wrote a book called Black Athena in the 80s, which received a lot of attention, a lot of criticism, uh, a, a, a furor around the book, partly because he was a Cambridge educated scholar, partly because of who his family were, his granddad was an Egyptologist. But nonetheless, he might, he might, some people might feel that he overstated the case of Egypt's influence on Greece. But the Greeks themselves said, yeah, some of us went to study in Egypt, no big deal. As you can see here. And thus, Egypt was the cradle of the mathematical arts. Can you see coming from Aristotle? That's a big compliment. There's another quote from Aristotle, I'll paraphrase, but he's basically insulting the ancient Egyptian priests because they wouldn't give him all of their secrets. He's acknowledging they had knowledge they would not share with him. And he insults them for it, not something we look at today. They had a value for pi of 3.16, which with no calculators, thousands of years ago is pretty impressive. I must point out that value is on a papyrus read that we know is a child's school textbook. So we don't know whether or not they got a more accurate figure for pi, but we know that a high school student could work out pi to two hundredths of a decimal place. The so-called Pythagorean theorem, 365 day calendar based on astronomical observation. They also had another calendar which took account of the leap year, but it didn't do it in the way we do it. It basically let the leap year run alongside. They understood that the year was 365 and a quarter days long. And they just let the quarter days add up until it came back round. I think it's 1,460 years until it would come back round and the years would link up again and they had a big festival. Um, they understood the concept of the month and the zodiac based on groupings of stars. They pioneered heliocentric theory and the concept of the atom. Not according to Akala, but according to Isaac Newton. So if you've got beef, take up the beef with Isaac Newton. Could you imagine a world without fractions? A world where you could throw away your times tables? Well, there has been such a world here in Ethiopia, where for thousands of years, merchants used a strange yet very sophisticated system of multiplication to calculate the price of goods at markets throughout the Horn of Africa in the Middle East. Today, the price of Ethiopian coffee is calculated on cash registers. But where we in the West rely on modern technology, Thousands of years ago, traders made their calculations with pebbles. All they needed to know is how to halve a number and how to double it. To Western eyes, the Ethiopian system is so strange that it seems more like a magic trick. To multiply 11 by 15, put the numbers into two columns. Keep halving the number on the left, ignoring all fractions. 11 becomes 5 becomes 2 until you reach 1. In the other column, you double. 15 becomes 30, becomes 60, becomes 120. Whenever an even number appears in the halving column, ignore the row. Group the remaining beans in the doubling column together and count. You get 165, the perfect answer. It seems unbelievable that a system can ignore fractions, even throw away parts of the calculation and still come up with the right answer. But it works every time. 
Take another example. When we multiply 31 by 25 using long multiplication, we multiply 31 first by 5 and then by 20 and add the results together. In Ethiopia, instead of multiplying by 5 and 20, they were effectively multiplying by 1, 8 and 16, just a different way to arrive at the number 25. By doubling a number, you're just multiplying by powers of 2. In our right-hand column, the number 31 has been multiplied by 1, then 2, then 4, then 8, and finally 16. But all that we need are the numbers that make up 25, that is the 1, the 8, and the 16. And here's the clever bit. By crossing out the even numbers on the left, you're always left with the correct powers of 2 on the right. In this case, the 2 and the 4 disappear, leaving 1, 8, and 16. By breaking the multiplication into powers of 2, the calculation has been converted into base 2 arithmetic. Once the sum has been broken down, all that remains is a simple addition. It's a system that seems completely foreign to Western eyes, but in fact, we use it thousands of times a day because it's this system that powers today's computers. So there are three ways in which this is written. Secondly, it's breaking multiplication down into a series of addition. And thirdly, it's breaking everything down into very simple steps. Making calculations as simple as possible was all the inventors of the Ethiopian method wanted to do. The solution they came up with is central to the way we live today. The ways they perform their calculations are almost exactly the same as the working methods of a computer. Amazingly, it seems that centuries before the invention of computers, Ethiopian traders cracked the code that lies behind the modern age.